Hey guys, so I have a VFC. It's a says VR16 on the body, but this is like the Av Avalon caliber series of guns. I'm not exactly sure which one this is, but this is my brother's. It is for sale actually, so if you're interested, go ahead. Um, I'll have my Instagram in the description. So this gun is for sale. We're looking to get about 250 shipped out of it. Um, I think they're about 350 new, and it's in pretty good shape. It was used probably once or twice. Um, so it's definitely well worth that $250 considering that's uh, shipping at our cost. Um, that won't include a battery, it won't include a magazine, nothing, just the gun. It is wired to Dean's, so that's one uh, plus to it. So let's start from the back, go to the front. So this is the VFC QRS stock. The previous owner took out the little notches here, which are really stupid, quite honestly, because they don't fit batteries in there unless they're like 7.4 skinny nunchucks, really thin ones. Um, you're going to be fitting your battery in your buffer tube, which the buffer tube has plenty of space. This is a 25 to 50 C11 one. This is kind of an old battery. It's a little bit bloated, and it still slides in there perfectly. Um, and you could probably put the stock at that position. So that's pretty short for a pretty long battery like that. So that's what I would get for this gun, a Dean's 11.1 Nanotech 25 to 50 C, and you'll be you'll be getting some good performance there. It's got a metal buffer tube, ambi sling mount there on the receiver. It's got a metal body, the BR16 body, which is really really nice body. Um, I have a love and hate with these bodies. The lower receivers are all the same on the BR16s. But the calibers and the um, Avalons are have like a 416-esque receiver top. And this is extremely tight on this gun, which is good. But I tried to put a V12 in this gun, and it did not fit. It had multiple, multiple issues. Um, so if you're going to try to put a V12 in this, don't. Please don't. Get something else. Do a Polar Star F1, Polar Star Jack, F2, maybe a Fusion Engine. But I would do something where you keep the original gearbox shell because it seems like this is kind of picky. Pretty nice brass inner barrel. The buckings are pretty good as well from VFC. And the hop-up unit is rotary style. It's plastic, but it is... I, I, these are miles above the Crytac, quite honestly. Because the Crytac ones are really thin on the front here and they crack all the time. This one just does not crack. While we have the gearbox here, they do have their standard version, well, kind of, kind of a standard version 2 gearbox from VFC. They adjusted it in one way, basically, two ways. There's no opening back here, like a G &G, like a lot of G&G gearboxes, so you can't see your piston. And then it's a quick change spring system, which is nice. Um, it seems like this is shooting about 340 FPS, so CQB FPS. I don't know if this spring was swapped or or whatever, um, so I don't know if this is kind of how it came FPS wise, but it would be smart for VFC to definitely do 350 or below on these short barreled guns and leave the option for the customer with the quick change spring system. If they want to put a 120 in here, they can get 400. Continuing with the lower receiver, it's got a QRS grip on here, which is the first QRS VFC grip that I've actually held, and this thing is nice. I'm not normally a huge fan of the grips that go back here, the back strap, um, but this is a very nice grip. It's got the lightning trigger on here, which is pretty cool. It's also got this QRS thumb rest trigger guard thing. It's like one piece. It looks like a bolt catch like on an ACR, but it's not. It does have a functioning bolt lock system when you buy the gun. Not for me, but brand new because this one's kind of messed up. The rail system on here is a key mod. So it's got key mod slots on the side and the bottom, and then it's got some built-in rails there and the monolithic top. It is all CNC aluminum. It's a really good quality setup. VFC is good at that. Nice flash hider. It's like a 416 style. Um, it's kind of a 416 style rail. Just cut off, just add a... <laughs> the uh, key mods instead of a straight rail, quite honestly, because the front here, you can tell this gas block is like, looks exactly like a 416, and this, that's a 416. Um, if you can get just a regular VR16, I would go with that rather than like this one, or I don't know, see again, I'm not sure if this is the caliber, I'll have it in the description, I'm not sure if this is the caliber or the, the um, Avalon, um, but I don't like this one with this top here. I think this is what's making the issue with fitting a V12. So if you had just a standard upper, I think you'd be good. Because I people have put V12s and VR16 lowers all the time and fusion engines. 
So as far as the internals, it's got a standard selector switch. I had to replace that. The, uh, it comes with the Nambi one, but it was missing pieces from the previous owner, so I just put a standard one on there. Safety works and everything. It's got a you know, nice aluminum cylinder. It's got the VFC gears, which they've actually updated them slightly on their uh, Avalons. I think all the VR16s, even just the base ones, are going to come with uh, better gears. They're bearings now, which is kind of a con for me. I would highly... I really, really like the VFC steel meteorite bushings. Those are amazing. I love those. Probably my favorite, most favorite steel bushings. But they start doing bearings, which is okay. But if you were to do a high rate of fire on this, do 35, 40, maybe 50 rounds a second, whatever, DSG, I wouldn't use the bearings in here. I'd definitely swap them for steel bushings. So that would be an extra cost added. But these bearings would be good for like 30 rounds a second. So I wouldn't exceed that with the bearings. Um, it also has a piston in here that is reinforced in the back, and then it has like six steel teeth, six, maybe eight, um, but the pickup tooth is still plastic, so VFC did improve there on their older pistons were junk, but it's still not perfect. If you do upgrade this gun, just throw a metal rock piston in here, just do it. Um, the spring, I don't know what rating it is. It's shooting about 340, so probably a 1, 105, M100. Trigger response is good. Rate of fire is good. This does have a Crytac 30k motor, so that is the only thing that is not stock on the internals. And this one does come with a MOSFET. So these, I think it's the Avalon and the Calibers are going to come with the MOSFETs. But if you get the VR16, it's going to be non-MOSFET version because my dad has a VR16 and it's a non-MOSFET version. So I think if you get the uh, Caliber and the Avalon, they're MOSFETs. Um, the MOSFET seems to be nice. It's like built into the receiver here, so it's not in the buffer tube, which is cool. I have heard of them failing, so um, although you know everyone's going to have an issue at some point with their with their MOSFET, like they're not indestructible, um, especially one that comes stock. But out of the box, it's it's good. It does precock quite a bit, and the rate of fire is probably like 23 rounds a second, which is pretty good. All right, so had to work on it a little bit, <clears throat> so. The sector gear is short stroked by three teeth and it has a ASG M115 spring. So shooting 330 short stroke by three teeth. So it's probably shooting 370, 380 full stroke. Uh, I knew it was the ASG M115 because they actually have color. They're color coded, which is really cool. So it's easy way to tell. Also, um, it, it has an SHS DSG tappet plate. I have no idea why, and there was no sector chip on it, so that's why it wasn't feeding with, like, anything. So I put a Lonex sector chip on there and used the same DSG tappet plate, um, because honestly, I don't have any spare tappet plates that are good. Um, so the feeding improved. It feeds with high caps um, and mid caps on semi-auto. So I tried Elite Force mid caps. These Banff mid caps and then the Vietnam style mid caps with point twos, semi auto was fine. Full auto, they skip at the end of the magazine, so um, high caps are still going to be the best option for full auto. But if you play indoor, um, whoever buys this, uh, semi auto will be great. And I'm sure they'll feed with two fives too on semi auto, but I would use twos because it only shoots 330 feet per second. So let's go ahead and get a rate of fire reading. This is with kind of a crappy high cap. Should work out fine. 329, 326, 328. 23.4 rounds a second, 331 FPS. So pretty much smack dab, I said about 23 rounds a second, and that's exactly what it shoots. So again, semi-auto runs fine with mid caps. So let's go ahead and just do semi with this BAMP. Trigger response is very, very good. Again, this is more of uh, an indoor gun, at least at this feet per second. of EVs, one left. High caps for full auto.
23 rounds a second with an 11-1 out of the box is good. That's, that's, that's good. If you're over 20, quite honestly, I'm impressed. Um, under 20, it's nowadays, under 20 is below average. So 23 is pretty good. So nice gun overall. MOSFETs are pretty nice. Great trigger response. Very, very solid build. The gun is super, super solid. So if you have any questions or anything, let me know. Again, this is for sale. 250 shipped with that sector chip. I'm not going to add any more for that sector chip. Um, and yeah, feeds great. I might include a standard high cap, but yeah, again, full auto, outdoors, high caps, indoors, semi-auto with twos. I guess you could use two fives if you wanted to.